Hey, this is Mr. Preston back with trigonometry part two. Okay, so last time we were deciding whether to use sine, cosine, or tangent. We did an overview of trigonometry and we went over sine. Now I'm going to go over cosine, tangent, and I'm going to go over how to, um, how to solve once you set up the ratio. So remember the first thing to do is to always label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Across from my numbered angle is my opposite. Across from the right angle is my hypotenuse. And next to the numbered angle is my adjacent. What I do is I circle what I have and what I need. So in terms of side lengths. The side I have has a value of 20. The side I need is Y. This is a Y over here. So adjacent and hypotenuse. So Katoa. So which one has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Well, that is cosine. So this is the cosine of my angle, 49 degrees. That equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So equals Y over 20. Now this is a y, not a 4, so y over 20. So that's cosine. Let's take a look at a tangent, then we're going to start solving these things. So I'll use the same picture. Okay, so here I am given my, or I, I, uh, I'm trying to find my opposite. And I'm given my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. So opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use tangent. How do I know that? Well, it says it over here, and I have my little trick. So cut toa. Toa, OA is opposite and adjacent. So this is the tangent. Of 49 equals opposite. What's my opposite? X over what's my adjacent? 10. Okay? So I'm going to erase this here. Just going to write up here. So, ka, toa. Sine, opposite hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite and adjacent. So let's say let's say we have tangent of 49 equals x over 10. Well, what is the tangent of 49? Well, if I use my calculator, remember when using your calculator, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're in the right mode. So hit mode. Make sure it says degree. If it does not, go down and select degree. After you've done that, hit clear. So tangent of 49 is 1.15. Okay, so that's going to help us. Tangent of 49 is not 49. It's actually just 1.15. So essentially what this says is 1.15 equals x over 10. So what we can do here is we can cross multiply. So the tangent of 49 equals x over 10. So a couple different ways to do this. What I would do here is I would put this over 1, and you can cross multiply. One thing that might be easier for you is to take tangent of 49 and convert it to what, uh, what it actually is. So here I'm going to do two decimal places. So we said tangent of 49 is 1.15. So 1.15 over 1 equals x over 10. Okay, this is a 1.15. If I cross multiply here, 1.15 times 10 is just 11.5. So 11.5 equals x. So what does this mean? Well, my opposite side here has a value of 11.5. Okay, so this is 11.5. How would I find this side length up here? Well, now I have two side lengths and I want a third, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to do one more problem where we find a side length, and then we'll refine um, the third side length 
using the Pythagorean theorem. So one side length with trigonometry, and then once you have two side lengths, Pythagorean theorem. Here it goes. So there's our example. Okay, let's say we have similar problem. I'm trying to find my hypotenuse now. So if I'm trying to find my hypotenuse, same thing, this is my opposite. This is my adjacent, my hypotenuse. I'm going to circle what I have, and I'm going to circle what I need. So adjacent and hypotenuse, it's going to be cosine. So this is the cosine of 49 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so tan over x. Okay, so what you can do is you can put this over 1. I'm going to convert the cosine of 49 uh, to a decimal. So cosine of 40, uh, 49, so that is 0.656. I'm just going to call it 0.66. So 0.66 over 1 equals 10 over x. Now I can cross multiply. 0.66 times x is 0.66x. 10 times 1 is 10. Is x by itself? Well, not yet. So I divide by 0.66. 10 divided by 0.66. x equals 15. Sorry. Remember here we're looking for the hypotenuse. 15.15. Okay, so this side length up here is 15.15, okay? So that's one way to do it. You'll get used to this pretty quickly. Um, another thing you can do here is, like I said, you can find the other side length. So I'm gonna erase what I have up here. Rewind the video if you need to see a certain part again. Okay, so now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side length. So this would be my C, right? My A and my B. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now remember, I could put an A here or a B there, doesn't matter. But the C always has to be across from the right angle. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 10 squared plus B squared equals 15.15 .15 squared. So 100 plus b squared, 10 squared is 10 times 10, equals 15.15 .15 squared, which is 229.5. Uh, so b squared is equal to 119.5. I took away 100. Now, the opposite of square is square rooting. So I square root 119.5, and I get b equals 10.9. So this side length right here, is now 10.9. Perfect. The only thing that remains is I'm going to find this angle here. Well, I have two angles, right? 90 degrees and 49. There's 180 degrees inside of a triangle. That's the triangle interior sum theorem. So 90 plus 49. My, so 180 minus that is this angle here is 41. So this is called solving a right triangle. What I did here is I found one side length using trigonometry to find the hypotenuse. I found the, uh, one of my other sides using Pythagorean theorem, and I found out my missing angle. And that's pretty much trigonometry for right now.